Thank you for staying with me. This is the concluding part of this series on ARDL and three ways causality checks in EVUs. If you are just joining us, please make sure you have watched the first two videos so that you can be in tune with what we have done so far. This is the model we are working with and um, I'm taking each variable in the model as a dependent variable. Like I said before in my previous videos, this may not be your own approach. But I'm just trying to broaden your understanding in such a way that you can use the variables in your model to be a dependent variable, trying to create a vector relationship. In the previous video, I did uh, checks using um, the regressive statistics and the word coefficient test. So in this video, I'll just conclude by conducting the pairwise Granger causality test and also run some diagnostics. As a recap, this was the outcome of what we obtained when we did the regressions using the T-statistics and when we conducted the wall test. So we concluded that there was a unidirectional causality from domestic credit growth to real interest rate, same unidirectional causality from investment to real interest rate, and a bidirectional causality from investment to domestic credit growth. So this is what we obtained using the first and the second check. So let's see whether the third check will be different or will be a confirmation of this. Still using our variables, I'll quickly run the regression, then we use the Granger test. The first variable is the domestic credit growth, and I list every other variable in the model. Always remember to change list ways to ARDL, and for the trend specification is case 3. Dependent variable takes one lag, the regressor takes two lags because of the real interest rate, I click OK. So looking at the third check, all you need to do is come here, click on Quick, Group Statistics, and maneuver to Granger Causality Test. Click that, and here you list the variables. Click OK. Because I have an annual data, yes, I can use two lags, so I leave it the way it is. I click OK. So this is the outcome of the pairwise Granger Causality Test. You can see it up here. And these are all the null hypotheses which shows us the direction of causality between the variables. And remember, decision criteria is that you reject the null if the p-value is lower than 0.05. But where the p-value is not lower than 0.05, the null hypothesis cannot be rejected. So let's look at the null hypothesis involving the real exchange rate, Granger causing domestic credit growth. Looking at the prior value, we cannot reject the null. So there's no grandeur causality in that situation. What about domestic credit growth grandeur causing real interest rate? It's significant even at the 1% level, so we are rejecting the null hypothesis. So we can say yes, domestic credit growth grandeur causes real interest rate. Every other relationship here shows there is no grandeur causality using the rejection criteria because the p-values associated with the F statistics are higher than 0.05. So the only significant causal relationship is from domestic credit growth to real interest rate. Okay, now let's look at when real interest rate is a dependent variable. List the variables. Changing least squares to ARDL. Always remember that. Case 3 from here. Real interest rate takes two lags. Other regressors takes one lag. You click OK. So here to test for the pairwise Granger causality, we go to quick group statistics, Granger causality. Now list the variables, still maintaining two lags. So this is the outcome of the pairwise Granger causality test. So you can see here that within the ARDL model, the pairwise Granger causality test will give you the same result. It will give you the same result. So this result is exactly the same thing as we got when domestic credit is a dependent variable. Only the arrangement is different, but the p-values here are exactly the same. So you can see here that domestic credit grandeur causes real interest rates at the 1% level. Same thing we got. In fact, the result is exactly the same. Like I said, only the arrangements differ. So there won't be any need to do the same thing for investment because we are going to get exactly the same thing. So having sorted out the pairwise Granger causality, meaning we are going to get the same thing for the three equations, now let us check for diagnostics for each of this equation. So let's go to quick. So we'll begin with the domestic credit equation. 
changing least squares to ARDL. Remember, I've been using case 3. The lab for the dependent variable is 1. For the regressors, I'm using 2. Okay. Now we are testing for diagnostics so that our results can be taken with some seriousness. So we go to view. Residual diagnostics, we start with the histogram normality test. Here we can see for the domestic credit growth uh, model, the residuals are not normally distributed. The Jacobera p-value is highly significant. Let's check for serial correlation. LM test using two lags. We are happy to see that the areas in the model are not serially correlated. Let's test for heterosclerotic elasticity. We we'll click OK. We can see here bush can grow free. We are also happy to see here that the model is almost elastic. So that's the good news. Next is to test for stability. We click on View, Model Stability, Recursive Estimates. We click on Custom of Squares Test. We are also very glad to see that our model is stable. Let's do the same thing for when the real interest rate is a dependent variable. Changing least squares method here to ARDL. Trend specification, case 3. Dependent variable takes 2 lag. That was a lag for the real interest rate. Other regressors take 1 lag. Okay. This is the output for the real interest rate. Now let's check for some diagnostics. We go to residual diagnostics, histogram normality. We are happy to see that for the real interest rate equation, the errors are normally distributed. For the serial correlation LM test, go back to view, residual diagnostics, serial correlation, click on that. Lags remain two, we click OK. We are also happy to see that the residuals here are not serially correlated. Next, we need to check for heteroscedasticity. We click on view, residual diagnostics, heteroscedasticity test. The Bruce Pagan Goffrey is highlighted. Click OK. Also, good to know that the model is homoscedastic. Lastly, let's test for stability view, stability diagnostics, recursive estimates. Click on Custom of Squares test. Also, good to know that the model is stable. Lastly, let us run the estimates using investment as a dependent variable. Changing least squares methods to ARDL. Trend specification, case 3. Maximum lag for dependent variable is 1. For the regressors, 2. This is the outcome for the log of investment regression. To check for diagnostics, as usual, we go to view, residual diagnostics, histogram test. For the log of investment equation, we can see here that the residuals are not normally distributed. To test for serial correlation, we click on view. Residual diagnostics, serial correlation LM test. Leaving the lags at 2, we click OK. We are happy to see that the errors in this equation are not serially correlated. Next is to test for heteroscedasticity. Go back to view. Maneuver to residual diagnostics. Click on heteroscedasticity test. Bush Pagan is highlighted. Click OK. Also good to know that the model is uh, homoscedastic. Lastly, we test for stability. Click on view, stability diagnostics, maneuver to recursive estimates. Click that. Check the box for custom of squares test. Click OK. Also, the model is stable. So, to conclude our tutorial on how to check for causality in an ARDL framework, I have put together the various outcomes that we obtained when we use different checks. T statistics, F wall test was used on the last video, and in this video, I showed you how to use the pairwise Granger F test. The overall conclusion you can see here in this column I created there's causality from investment to domestic credit growth, there's causality from domestic credit growth to real interest rate, there's causality from investment to real interest rate, and there's causality from domestic credit growth to investment from the outcome of these three checks. In conclusion, we can say, as we said earlier in the last video, that there's a unidirectional causality from domestic credit to real interest rate and also from investment to real interest rate. 
the only bi-directional causal relationship in this model is from investment to domestic credit growth and vice versa. Like I said, the element of causality will always enrich every study. It brings out other salient information regarding the variables that you have used in your research. So try to include causality checks or causality tests in your manuscripts on your papers. I will buttress it again, like I said before, the T statistics and the F statistics, either from the explanatory variables or from grandeur and wall tests, will always serve as robustness or evidence of validation of any causal relationship in your model. For further referencing, you can consult these textbooks, as you can see on the screen, and so many journal articles who use causality checks in their papers. Thank you for staying with me so far. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so. Support me to attain the golden 1,000 subscribers. Click on my playlist. I have so many interesting videos on ARDL application. Don't go away. I'll be right back with more interesting topics.